If you hear anything weird, like say the sound of tinfoil crinkling, it is not your speakers, it is the tinfoil on my windows. Anyway, hello and welcome to, or back to, my channel. I'm Kit and today we're going to have a look at Laura Loomer and Laura Chen having a chat about women's healthcare. Before we get into it, I would like to note that I don't know Lauren or Laura, and these are my thoughts and opinions on the content they put out for public consumption. That being said, thank you for clicking on this video, and I would like to give extra thanks to my patrons. Links to my socials and Patreon are below, along with sources and resources, and now, onto the reason we're all here. Lauren Chen is a Christian conservative YouTuber, and in April, she did a live stream with Laura Loomer titled Tucker Carlson Undermines Trump. And if you're unfamiliar with Laura Loomer, I could have sworn she had her 15 minutes six or so years ago, but apparently she's still around. And per her wiki, she's known for political commentary, conspiracy theories, and misinformation. And she's part of the far-right, alt-right, anti-Islam, Trumpism, and white nationalism movements. Anyway, this is a section from their live stream, which was titled, Women's Healthcare Needs a Rebrand for the GOP to Win 2024 and Just No. And honestly, I am disgusted that not only is women's healthcare, by which they mean abortion, being used as a political talking point, but it's two women having this conversation. And Lauren has a daughter. She previously called herself a girl's girl. I just... Anyway... There were a few pieces I wanted to comment on, and then we'll wrap up the video with a look at what the GOP is currently up to regarding women's health care. And I think when it comes to the issue of abortion, we, we cannot even begin to start talking about a federal abortion ban leading up to a presidential election unless we start to turn the tide in terms of the messaging and the culture. Because I think abortion is an immoral issue. I think if, if we got our messaging right, we can identify ourselves as correctly being pro-life, pro-science, and pro-woman. But we are not there yet. I would love to know what Lauren defines as pro-woman because I don't see how forcing a woman to remain pregnant when she doesn't want to be, regardless of the reason, is pro woman. But please, everyone, remember this. A federal ban is the goal, they just don't think they have enough support to campaign on it. And so they plan to keep it quiet until they have enough people in office to make it a reality. Republicans don't know how to be on offense either, right? They're not, right. they don't want to talk about this exactly. issue. And I saw yesterday, they allowed the Democrats to control this whole narrative. There was zero pushback yes. on, oh, thank, thanks Donald Trump and Carrie Lake for the abortion ban in Arizona. How are you going to blame Donald Trump when he literally came out the day before the abortion ban in Arizona and say and say that it's his fault when his own statement says that he's against a national abortion ban? If you're against a national abortion ban, you're also going to be against a ban in the state. You are. And President Trump eloquently stated, just like Carrie Lake stated, that they're against the abortion ban in Arizona. That doesn't make any sense. He's against a national ban, therefore he will be against a state ban? They're trying to play both sides here and make Trump sound simultaneously pro-life and pro-choice, whichever suits the moment. But let's be honest, Trump doesn't care about abortion bans and he just says whatever he has to to ensure the audience he's currently speaking to will vote for him. I would also like to remind everyone that in 2023, Trump said he was proud to be the most pro-life president in US history. And why does he claim that? Because he appointed three conservative justices to the Supreme Court and that was how Roe was overturned after 50 years, which is why people were sarcastically thanking Trump for the Arizona ban. If Trump hadn't appointed those judges, it wouldn't have happened. The idea that Republicans are always on defense, never on offense, is something that, honestly, I think it's gotten worse over the past several years because I think the media, any pretense of neutrality they've ha they pretended to have is totally gone at this point. So you have sites or... Uh, publications like CNN, MSNBC, when it comes to abortion, actively telling women in some of these red states or some of these states where abortion was on the ballot that if you have an ectopic pregnancy, you're going to die. If you have a miscarriage, you're going to be put in jail. Outright lies. And what right. did Republicans do? Nothing. Oh, please. We've been playing by Republican rules for years. The talking points are always the ones Republicans want to push. And is it possible people are worried about ectopic pregnancies because in Ohio, they attempted to pass a bill that would require doctors to re-implant an ectopic pregnancy into the uterus? Or in Texas, doctors refused to treat an ectopic pregnancy because they thought there was some chance the pregnancy was still viable. Is it possible people are worried about being jailed for miscarriages because that's already been happening? These are not the fever dreams of Democrats eager to beat Republicans at election. 
these are realities. I'm pro-life, but in, until we start getting our act together, you can't blame President Trump for realizing that he still needs to get in office if he's going to enact any change. And I think the most important thing he could have done, he did done, which was to you know, appoint the justices who got rid of Roe v. Wade and kick it back to the states. Well, now it's up to us in the states to win these debates, right? He's done his part. Now we need to do our part. So they do understand why people blame Trump for the bans. They just play dumb when it suits them. But thanks for saying the quiet part out loud, Lauren. And everyone, please remember that Republicans will say whatever they have to to get in office. And once there, they will begin enacting the policies they might have sounded much more moderate about when the election was still upcoming. Anyway, is it an anti-choice segment if someone doesn't try to say what Laura is about to? The she in question is Lila Rose, who apparently was very disappointed that Trump didn't call for a national ban. Is she going to vote for for Joe Biden, who wants abortion on demand and is is in favor of infanticide and and supports people like Ralph Northam who push for uh, for for killing babies even after they're born? This is a great example of Republicans controlling the narrative. Abortion on demand isn't a thing. And abortion is not infanticide. Ending a pregnancy is not killing an infant and no one is trying to make infanticide legal. Also, roughly 1% of abortions take place after 21 weeks. And common sense would say that when someone wants an abortion, they want it as soon as possible not to wait. And especially not to wait until they're about to give birth. I don't know how people fall for these talking points. If they just pause to think, they would see how ridiculous they are. That's enough from these liars. Now I want to talk about some things Republicans have been up to that folks like Lauren and Laura are ignoring. In Tennessee, the governor signed a bill criminalizing adults who help minors get abortions. Multiple counties in Texas have passed anti-abortion travel bans. In Indiana, the attorney general wants terminated pregnancy reports to be, quote, released in their entirety for the sake of enforcement. In Louisiana, lawmakers rejected adding rape and incest exceptions to their abortion ban. In Alabama, the attorney general argued that helping people leave the state for an abortion is a criminal conspiracy, quote, an elective abortion performed in Alabama would be a criminal offense, thus a conspiracy formed in the state to have that same act performed outside the state is illegal. And finally, Republicans are trying to expand the definition of fetus to a fertilized egg. And I don't mean an embryo. They're trying to claim that birth control is abortion because it makes the uterus a hostile environment. And I don't think I want to find out what happens after preventing pregnancy is deemed abortion. Something else that stands out to me is how Lauren and Laura ignored the side effects of abortion bans. Women being tortured having to carry a fetus that has no chance of survival. Women at risk of death due to delayed action causing them to go septic. And women who just need to deliver are being put at risk as abortion bans cause OBGYNs to leave affected states. So please, how is any of this pro-woman? And it's not a surprise, and I've said it before, but if these people were truly pro-life, they would be finding ways to make life better, to make abortion unneeded, than trying to make life worse and outlawing abortion altogether. As it is, if Republicans got their way and our pathetic social safety nets and work protections went to nothing, I don't say all this to scare you or to fear monger. I just want people to be informed. And there's a lot more going on than what I mentioned. I recommend checking out Jessica Valenti's Substack account for updates and information. And that is what bothers me about Lauren's video. Setting aside the fact that neither Lauren nor Laura show any concern for women's health care, it's not a talking point political parties use to win elections. It's something that affects real people and it has wide ranging effects. The doctor who needs to decide if the pregnancy is life threatening enough. The woman who gave her niece some money. The friend who gave a friend a ride. The bystander who mentioned an abortion clinic in another state. These laws aren't just outlawing abortion. They're being weaponized to use against friends and family and even strangers. It's disturbing and that is not the world I want to live in. <laughs> 